we are staying here for many years and teaching us the science of Bhakti Yoga. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Once there was one reporter in Britain. He asked Shri Prabhupada who came to present this message, Vedic message to the world. So he asked one question which is absolutely relevant question to everyone. But he asked him, what is the purpose of life? That's something that everyone should hopefully <laughs> at least at some point contemplate about what is the purpose of my existence? Why am I here? What am I doing? What am I supposed to do? What is the goal of life? What is the purpose of life? And now there could be various answers. There have been so many answers to it. And uh, we may also give some different answers. You know, we may say maybe we can we can contemplate and say, oh yes, to do bhakti, maybe to do some tapasya to you know, do some worship, do some something in relationship also maybe to spiritual life. But very interestingly, Sri Prabhupada didn't say that. These are all correct answers. There might be several correct answers, but more precisely, Sri Prabhupada just presented it in its essence. He said the goal of life is to be happy. Anybody disagrees? No? Okay. The goal of life is to be happy, otherwise what's the purpose of living, right? We all, we are doing what we are doing, we want to be happy. So, but then, so Prabhupada concluded, he said, yes, the goal of life is to be happy, but we don't know how to be happy. <laughs> that's, that's a big difference. We don't know how to be happy. We are trying, we are experimenting, we are doing so many things in life, we are exploring, we are doing so many different things. Even, even rejecting accepted standard norms, traditions, so many different things. We are thinking, this will make me happy, that will make me happy. <coughs> but ultimately, are we happy? That you may answer for yourself. Generally, practically, not, we can't even say generally, absolutely nobody is happy. Because you can't be happy in this material world. I'll give an example afterwards of this. You can't be happy. It's, it's, it's impossible. It's a futile endeavor. Of course, there is some happiness. There is something. We don't say there are some semblances, there are some moments, there are some things. But overall, this life is not a really wonderful life. Yeah. On this pla in this place, in such kind of circumstances that we live in, especially in the modern day, uh, things are getting worse. Actually, things are getting worse with a lot of mental disease and manifesting. So, then how to be happy? The goal of life is to be happy. What, what does that mean? So that's the subject of this presentation. So we'll explore this a little bit. We'll point to it. Because that's also what the scripture says. Scripture doesn't don't say that you know, we should be miserable and we should be whatever, you know, we should be doing something that really makes us you know, puts us in difficulty or suffering. No, scripture said the, the nature of our existence, the nature of our soul is to be happy. That's our nature. That's our, you know, as they say, birthright. That's our constitutional position. So how to achieve that? Because we see, yes, we want to be hankering for that. We're doing so many things, but still it's, it's kind of slipping out. You know, like you grab something, just pull, you know, gets through the fingers or something. It's just, it's not happening. So how to do that? So the Vedic scriptures, they're giving us some guidelines. They're giving us some instructions. <clears throat> they're telling us how to achieve that satisfaction, how to achieve that happiness. And of course, understand the reality of the place we live in. Essentially, we shouldn't be in illusion thinking that we can be happy in this material world. That's never going to happen. So you can drop that immediately from beginning. Don't think they're not one of those courses that yes, you do some yoga, you do some days, you do just that, you pay some money like this, you do that, then you'll be happy. That doesn't work like that. It never works. This is all cheating business going on. You can't be happy in this material world on absolute plateau. It's just not possible as long as you identify with this body that you have. It's not going to work. 
because the body itself is full of misery. Now, everybody, anybody here that's satisfied with the body you have, anybody is very, you know, excited, very confident, very happy with the body that you have, all the different features of it, qualities, shapes, huh? Everybody is happy and satisfied. So you see, that's the body. <laughs> That's the nature of the body. It's, it's, it's temporary, it's imperfect, so many, and it gets worse, you know, as the old age sets in, so many diseases. We spoke also, we mentioned on the mental side as well, uh, so many different kinds of issues. So then how can you be happy in such a, such a position? It's impossible. So not on material plane, but on the spiritual plane, yes, that, that is possible. But how to reach that spiritual plane? Yeah, that's the subject of this little discussion. Okay, so let's start. So, hope you are all are seeing here, here our presentation here on the board. Okay, so that's one course among a few presentations. Okay, so we have search for happiness, practical Vedic solutions to problems of life. So we are facing difficulties. We can't deny anybody who's denying this. It's like. And we can have to make and have different conclusions about it. But there are always some kind of issues and difficulties. Science and technology offers many unsatisfactory, superficial, stopgap solutions to problems of life. Being superior to animals, humans can inquire about the root cause of all problems and the ultimate goal of life. Vedic wisdom teaches the art of putting a full stop to all problems by aligning with laws of nature and God. So when you have a knowledge, when you know what you're supposed to do, then you can make some assessments. If not completely, but just the things in this material world. But we see science has struggles with it. We'll discuss that. Okay, so what are the problems of life? Of course. <laughs> you can you can you can make a huge list of it. If you, sometimes, sometimes if you just contemplate oh, what's happening to me today, what happened yesterday, what happened last week, what happened the whole month, and you keep on noting things throughout the next month and the next month, and maybe whole year you can come up with just amazing, <coughs> amazing, amazing notes of so many difficulties. Of course, there'll be very negative contemplation. And we're you know, turning maybe to be very depressive and uh, <clears throat> not, very, not very encouraging, but so many problems are there. They're just uh, waves and waves of difficulties that we keep on facing over and over. One good fortune is fortune, or whatever. Yeah, we, we can say it is fortune. We forget. <laughs> we forget. And we keep on hoping. But that's also a drawback. If we keep on forgetting and not doing anything about it, that's also, that's also another problem. So forgetfulness is one uh, good remedy, but it's also a problem if we absolutely neglect it. So there are so many, so many, as you said, there are problems on bodily level, on emotional level, so many difficulties are there. We'll mention some of those a little later. So practical Vedic solutions to the problems of life. Many times, I mean, I was every generation, young generation, especially in the West, you know, people are, uh, very frustrated, and uh, they know all the problems. You know, there's so many bands singing about it. You know, so many poets, you know, writing about it. There's so many politicians speaking about it. There's so many things. So everybody knows there's so many problems. There's so many issues. That's fine, and we can become attracted. Okay, great. Once you know, at least somebody's recognizing. Somebody's recognizing. Sometimes people are even blind to certain things. They're so deeply in ignorance. So that's attractive. That's nice. Somebody's recognizing, okay, but what is the solution? Do people know the solution? They know really how to tackle and change and affect and improve anything? Well, that's a big, that's another big problem. And mostly the answer is no. Mostly the answer is no. People, every, everything is just revolving on circle, circles or cycles. And you end up practically where you were, if not worse. <clears throat> so we'll discuss a little bit about nature of human life. We'll discuss about the different subjects of this presentation. Temporary solution is all about a little bit of science, technology. Uh, we'll 
talk about a permanent solution, what is the what is it that the Vedas, what is it that Bhagavad Gita, what is it that scriptures have to offer? So what we are doing, we find happiness in so many things. So many anything lately that's going on, I'm not so sure. I think some tennis thing is going on in Europe. People play different sports, right? And they perform all kinds of other things. My <laughs> 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 brother once he was jumping from like this in parachute and then he bumped himself and then never again, you know, it's like People want some kind of adrenaline rush. They do all kinds of, all kinds of things. They're ready to do because life is so boring. That is there. They will try to do all kinds of things. Of course, then they will do all kinds of partying and this and that. Yeah, take some intoxicants and uh, whatever. Yeah. Or they find some happiness in trying to. As we said, adjust this body, make it more uh, attractive, dress it in different ways, or undress it in different ways. And of course, there are so many, you know, hairstyles. People are so worried about the state of their hair. It's <laughs> heavy shades, you know. <laughs> Keeps the life much easier, you know. Uh, <laughs> it's like, how many hours have people spend? You know, that's it's, it's inconceivable. How much money you have to pay? You know, that's also, I mean, so basically, happiness means improved facilities for eating, sleeping, mating, and defending. Some basic propensities that we have in life. So what does that mean now? Because animals also find happiness in the same activities. There are some basic ones. Eating, sleeping, making, defending. Because <coughs> can you be happy if somebody is threatening you? Or can you be happy, let's say now monsoon is coming, you don't have shelter, you get wet and it's cold and you get sick. And, you, know, you need some shelter. So that's why people defend. They defend their shelter. Mm -hmm. Then they have to get together. They don't be alone. You need, and then sleeping, you need some rest. You need to eat. Can't, let's say even if you want to fast, sometimes you can't do it forever. So we see that animals, they're eating, they're sleeping, they're mating, they're defending. So they're doing. But they also have friends, they have fun, they have family life, you know. They play around, they do things. It's a nature. It's a nature of human beings. It's a nature of different other species. So these are funny ones. <laughs> So eating, sleeping, mating, defending, it's common. That's pretty common in humans and animals. Now you can say here, okay, what is the very specific quality of, let's say, eagle? Can anyone say? What's the very specific quality of eagle? Eyes. Raise your hand. Or you have hands. Can you raise a hand and say, huh? What's the very good quality of an eagle? Huh? Anybody here? I hope you know something about it. You can work your... Huh? It's a very simple question, just to make things a little bit interactive, don't you? Huh? Flying high. Flying high. Okay, good. Yes, you can fly very high. It has such an ability. Anything else? Good focus. Have some good focus. Yes, eyesight, like you said. Huh? You want to say something? It's very good. He can catch. He can catch, I think. Yes. Lost. What? Claws, claws. Claws, yeah, he can, he's very powerful. Eagle, eagle can stretch, I don't know, it's like, really, it can be very, uh, I think two meters, or so, maybe even more, I'm not sure, it depends. He can take even a small deer, you know, he can grab it, you know, and then uh, pull it up, I don't know what they do, they just dump it down or something, but it's all, it's very powerful. So, it has some very amazing qualities. What about horse? He has the best focus. He has a good focus, okay? Yeah, but sometimes you have to put the blinkers on him. Actually. Uh huh? You blinkers. Yeah, that's what. But okay. What? What else? Uh, uh, anybody? Stamina. Huh? Stamina. Stamina. Okay, he can be very powerful. 
uh, very fast also. It is very There's one very interesting quote, and I'm sure you won't get, it's not so important, but I, I didn't know that before, but I found that, I found that out later. Although I was dealing with horses when I was kidding, my father had some horses. Anyway, um, but not afterwards. It's a very good sense of smell. No? It's interesting. You wouldn't say that for the horse, but it does. Even cows, which is very interesting, because when you, when you, anybody of you have come to, we have a Talasari farm. Many cows are very, well, what they do when you approach them first, they try to smell you. And then whether they like that smell or not, they'll <laughs> they allow you to touch them or not. It's interesting. And you should never approach cow, many people approach like this, you know? You know that? Yeah. You should never do this. You want to tag the cow with something. So never do this nonsense. It's use little psychology. You never do like this because they think you want to hit them. No? What you do you have to do like this? Approach them like this. That they will think that you're giving them something. And they will come. Anyway. Okay, horse can also be fast. Okay, dog, it's very yeah, he has a very good sense of sense, that uh, smell. Number. Huh? Number. What? Number friendly. You have a dog at home? Friendly. Friendly, yeah, okay. That's some, yeah, so it's quite some good qualities. Okay, what about Hati? Hati, my side. What about Hati? What's the, what's the, oh, here is. What? Memory. Memory. Yeah, it's pretty yes. intelligent. Elephants are very intelligent. If you do something bad to them, they'll remember. I'm going to get in trouble. Really. They're very, very intelligent. They're not like, you know, like you may think they are. You're probably looking at them and they're very dull and dumb. Or something. No, they're both good. Of course, what's the most obvious quality of that elephant has? Sense. No. Huh? Here's behind. Appetite. Appetite. <laughs> <laughs> this temple had an elephant. There's a Hathi garden. Really, in Asia, they had an elephant. Yeah, he was eating 200 kg a day. It was difficult to maintain it. Even. They sent it to the village. <laughs> it's very powerful, no? It's very powerful, obviously. It's very powerful. Okay. What about polar bear? Anybody knows anything about polar bear? Not much, huh? Endurance in winter. Endurance in winter. They're very fast. You won't believe it, you know. And they, they, they're not so, I mean, they look nice, but they're, you know, human eaters. <laughs> you have to be very careful. <laughs> anyway, I doubt anyone will go to the Greenland or somewhere up there. <laughs> okay, birds, obviously. Now, what are the birds known for? Making mess around? Yeah, that's also good. <laughs> okay, what about humans now? How would you characterize a human being? What would you say this is really something that differentiates him from everybody else? Intelligence. What so? Intelligence. Well, some animals are more intelligent than humans. Okay, intelligence. You'll accept that. Yes. But anything else? Emotion. Ah, raise your hand. Okay, emotions. Well, uh, many animals have emotions. You never see, like dog, for example, the owner dies and the dog will cry and he will be so sad. Or something Egoistic. else that would happen to them. Huh? Egoistic. Egoistic. Okay, that's like one of the uh, more qualities of the humans, more exposed negative quality. Yes? Higher consciousness. Higher consciousness. Okay, that's true. They have greater awareness, yes, compared to other species. Uh, anything else? Yeah. Selfishness. Selfish. Um, okay, maybe they can be a little more selfish, but some other animals can also be selfish. <coughs> Sometimes, you know, the dogs, they fight, no? Or lions or something, they, you know, they catch them prey and then they also will be selfish. They'll fight, you know, for the things. Yes? Consciousness. Consciousness, I already said, you know, listen. 
Okay, so there are some qualities like this, but human, we're expecting to find something more compared to the other living beings. So in eating, sleeping, mating, and defending, animals have rational power and intelligence. Animals are better than human beings. And in some ways, you can really analyze certain things that they're doing, that they're quite capable. They're quite capable. So let's say, who's going to win? <laughs> Way better, you know. So is a human being only a two-legged, sophisticated, deluxe edition of animals? You know, or he's in any way superior? Because we did mention something about about it. But what does that mean? In spite of all these advancements, you know, we may say yes, we made big cities, we made the. Uh, Pyramids, we make these, we make that, <laughs> you know, we build a, we go to the moon or somewhere, if, if, that's another big question. We do so many different things, but anyway, in spite of all this advancement that we have, unfortunately, modern day humans are, what? Dissatisfied, full of anxiety, plenty of statistics, stressed, Depressed and above all unhappy. What did we say in the beginning? We do things what? To make us happy? No? You know, we build. What they're building now is uh, some connection link through the sea. They try to do this. Also, so much congestion and traffic. Try to do so many things. <coughs> doing the, so many things we're attempting to do to make us happy and satisfied. But we see things are, things are not really going the way that we want it to go. There's so much anxiety, stress, and depression. So technological advancement helps men enjoy better luxuries for better eating, sleeping, mating, defending, without offering any ultimate aim of life. This is sophisticated animal civilization. So it's not just good enough to improve on these four propensities, eating, sleeping, mating, and defending. It's not good enough if you just think of improving those and hoping that this will make you happy and satisfied. It's not going to work. Because even that you cannot improve. It may look so externally, superficially, but even then there will be so many flaws with it. So these are some paradoxes of life. You may read some of those, I won't. Hopefully you see to some extent. But I'll just read something. We've learned how to make a living, but not a life. We've added years to life, but no life to years. It's a paradox. We've been all the way to moon and back, but have trouble crossing the street to meet the new neighbor. You know, what is our state of feeling in relationships? It's horrible. We'll see that. Yeah. Working a job that you hate, to buy stuff you don't need, to impress people you don't like. Think about that. What's the purpose of our living? We're doing so many things society tells us to do trying to impress, whom are we trying to impress? <clears throat> Acting in a way that you know somebody else expects us to act. Where's our individuality? Where's our higher sense? We don't have it anymore. We've become complete machines. Cloned machines acting the way you know, some profit makers want us to act. That's all. That's what our life is. Moment. So it has become appallingly obvious that our technology has exceeded our humanity. No one said that? That was way years back. Well, see, what would he say now? <laughs> so many decades have passed. It didn't become any better. So U.S. How many of you want to go to U.S.? Anybody hoping? I heard so many people want to go and visit the U.S. Okay. You don't have to be honest, but anyway. Unless <laughs> <laughs> you want to go abroad, that's for, that's for sure. The uh, U.S. prison population, look at this growth. I don't have the latest one, but it's increasing anyway. The point is, why is if the, if the if U.S. is the happiest nation in the world, which is... Oof, what is the percentage? Mm. I think 75% of this planet's resources ends up in US. 
or it's consumed by you and 75%, can you imagine it? Of this whole planet ends up there only? That's, it's almost inconceivable. And still they're not happy. I lived there for like four months. And I said, so that's enough. I never came back. I didn't like it. I mean, I was in India before. So after India being there, oh, it was very unpowerful. So th this is this is the state, you know. If people are happy and satisfied, then why so many people end up in jail? Why they're doing so many? Just I just follow the news. So many. So anyway, th this is coming. This is coming. So many horrible things going on. Okay. So firearm sales in America. Look at this increase. Always an increase. Why people are buying some kind of weapon? Huh? Can you guess? Why they're doing that? Fear. Huh? Fear. Okay. What else? Might be something else. Why does the same thing? Fun. <laughs> yeah, it's fun to go around and shoot people. <laughs> yeah, they go sometimes hunting. Sometimes people like hunting, and they get hunted. Hunted <laughs> But basically, it's protection. Basic reason, yes, it's protection. They don't want anybody to trespass. Yeah. But there is one, I don't know if I have it here, maybe it's okay, I'm not sure. There's one uh, sticker, it says, you trespass here and you'll find out where, whether there is a life after that. <laughs> 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 That's a good one. Okay, so what about rape? India is like notorious for it. There's so many, anyway, statistics are horrible. Horrible, people can't control themselves at all. <clears throat> Nobody can control themselves anymore. It's horrible. So many cases, so many cases, so many cases. We don't hear about it, better we don't hear. But sometimes we have to bring out some, some of such kind of statistics, you know, to make ourselves aware. What's the, what's the environment we are living in? I mean, hey, of course, you can open newspapers every day, it's plenty of it. Within it. <coughs> Fortunately, we, we are not doing this here. Someone trying to retain and have some different consciousness. But that's the reality. You should never forget about it. It's very terrifying in reality. It's not nice. It's not just women get raped. You know, children get raped, and some men get raped. I don't know. <laughs> I mean, I it happens. It happens. It's not nice when somebody, you know. Of course, you can get. That's another one. No, that, that's a little more subtle, maybe I, I won't talk about it now, it's not time. You know, you can get raped in your dream by subtle beings. That's also there. Yeah. All kinds of rape. It's not nice to have such kind of experience. You know? But the girls still can't learn. They keep themselves so undressed and you know, then they complain about it. You know? There was one uh, statement made by in US by one very famous uh, one very famous person, he said, if you're not in business, then don't advertise. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so why are you complaining about it? You know? Why are you complaining about it? I mean, of course, it's not nice. It's very, very horrifying you know, experience. It's traumatic, very traumatic. Oh. And then, of course, yeah, we have uh, <laughs> so many fun things going on nowadays. I mean, it's been going on for. Right? You know what's the incest? Somebody, somebody doesn't know. I just, just don't want to tell you. Just I mean, somebody's really sorry. Okay. It's the game. Whole family can play. <laughs> So it's, it's like we talked yesterday, we had a class about last, you know, on Saturdays we have some classes, we discuss what lasting people do, you know, yeah. and how it affects the mind and stuff. So it's, it's a state of madness, it's a state of uncontrollable madness, and then what, 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 are, what are we supposed to do about it? How do we control that madness? How do we purify that madness? Okay, what about divorce rates? That's hiking up like anything. Let's see. 
That's like Luxembourg, 87, Spain, 65, France, 55, Russia, 50 plus something, U U US, 46. So. Of course, India, rising graph, so many, so many cases. I think at some point they appointed more court. I mean, they opened the courts or something or hired more lawyers. It's just an increase on increase on increase. And then the, the, there is definitely, when you have such kind of increase over the years, then what happens, people people don't even have a tendency. They don't want to marry anymore. They just stay together living like that. Or in the West, I was in LA, they, they had like a herd. That was now, it's more than 20 years back. They, they have a contract. You can make a contract and later on, if you wish, you can extend it. If you don't, if you don't have a contract going on. It's like, it's really, it's disgusting. And we, but in the beginning, what do we said? We want to be happy. What do people consider most happiest even? The day of marriage, right? You can go here behind, you can see this. <laughs> Two marriage parts going on in this temple. <laughs> but it ends up like this. Why? Because of several reasons. We won't discuss those. Because of many reasons, actually. We won't discuss those now. Uh, and then what's the worst thing? Who suffers the most? That's something that's not considered. Because people, we said already humans, very selfish. You know? Who suffers the most? I had, had one, when I was in, uh, I guess, seventh grade or something like this. In my neighborhood, there was one girl. The parents were always quarreling. And she couldn't handle it anymore. She was like fifth grade or something like this. She was younger. And she had elder sister. She was one year older than me. So then she went to some neighbors, I mean neighbors, no, the, some friends uh, home, which was in nearby vicinity. There, there, there was one skyscraper. She lived in a skyscraper. And she climbed up and she jumped. And it was a big thing and everybody was like, So it's terrifying, it's a terrifying experience. You know, we want to be happy, but it takes something to make a life happy. Okay, stress, you know, but in the US, one of the two cardiac arrests are on account of stress. And there are so many statistics, 90 million, but that, that's all. You know, nowadays things are just an incredible increase. Depression, depression, depression. Suicide rates, phew. Huh huge every 13 minutes that's like interesting japan has a lot india's terrible also india's very bad that was that was a few years back Sixteen thousand students in, in, in the last three years or something i've been to kota also i've spent time at so many it's terrible we don't talk much about it but it's going on why is it going on i think we should talk about it anyway Drugs becoming more and more popular. <laughs> anyway, I won't make jokes about it. It's not a nice thing. 23 million Americans are dependent. What means dependent in I think? You become such a slave, you can't control your mind, your senses, your energy. You can't, you're dis also, you become dysfunctional. We said there is one uh, <coughs> very powerful definition of an addiction. Addiction is such a state, it's such a powerful uh, quality that, that it forces you to, it, it compels you to have such a desire for certain thinking. Yeah. It's like, first of all, you, you develop desire, you develop desire to control or possess certain thing. What, what is that? Let's say I, I want to smoke. That means I want cigarettes. I want to drink. I want some alcohol. Or I, want, I want drugs. I want some, you know, powder or this that. Pills. Whatever. You, you develop a desire. But what happens on contrary, you know, that desire controls and overpowers you with unlimited, uncontrollable desires. That's the state of addiction. 
and it's described it's just like a vertigo it's just like downward spiral where you have so many interests in life you know it's so many wonderful things so many you know relationships friendships this and that and but when you add this one you know all the others are squeezed out and you end only with this one and nothing else matters to you it's a hellish and hellish existence no more friendship no more ability to work or study no more this no more that no more those qualities nothing you just end up with that addiction and you think this is the most important in life is it most important in life addiction do you really need to smoke you really need to smoke i smoke a few times just for because you know i, I never liked smoking anyway i smoke it <laughs> but not for long it's just it's just you do that as a teenager okay you try some things whatever it's, it's you don't need to smoke in life to be happy you don't need that stuff you know, you know I, you probably would say you know you're smoking to be cool and you're smoking fire and how can you be cool that's <laughs> 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 well, the user you know. or any other intoxication alcohol or whatever you know, you get, once I miss one concert, and I went to some concerts, some band playing, and I miss it, but I got drunk. So I can't, that was, that was, I think that was the last time. I said, hopefully I had some brain, you know, and I never had really so much taste for it. It's such a stupid thing, you know, how many brain cells you kill by, by, by drinking alcohol? It's a hellish thing. Why want to drink? What's, what's the use of it? Of course, people drink because they feel shy in front of girls, or they do this, they need some courage, they need some, there's so many stupid things, you know, people think with the alcohol or any, any intoxication, or they feel so many problems are there, and then I'll forget about problems, and I'll do this, and I'll do that, you know. Intoxication is a horrible stuff. You really, as you said, you have a desire to, you know, consume something, whereas that thing consumes you with unlimited desire. That's the addiction. Nothing else matters in life, but does this matter? No, not at all. You can live so happily without any of this. You, it's absolutely non-required. But once you become addicted, then you have a hellish life, and that's the only thing that matters to you. Horrible. So drug overdoses, anyway, so many cases, it's an increase. You know, national overdose deaths. There's so many statistics, you know. What about this? Wow, look at these guys. <laughs> it's like how we are addicted to video games and uh, watching this and watching that. An average American child spends, that's all statistic. I mean, that's TV. I mean, nowadays we don't have TVs. I mean, so, many TVs. <laughs> so many hours in front of screen, you know. So by the age 18, they've witnessed more than two lakh acts of violence and six in murders. What, what do children do when they see something? They try to imitate, no? Yes. If you see violence and rape and intoxication and so many things, what do you, what do you think children will, 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 will do? What do you think they will do? They'll imitate. They'll imitate. Is that very good education for them? Or what do you expect? That's why we have the whole society filled with Varna Shankar. Varna Shankar means unwanted children, unwanted population. Nobody wants them. How do they feel? And then what do they do as a result? You have a big chaos in society. Somebody says, what was, I heard something, somebody was mentioning New York this morning. Yeah, Bhima Prabhu gave a class, Bhagavatam class in the morning. He said, New York is a very dangerous city. Yeah, it's an extremely dangerous city. He said, even two o'clock, daylight, 2 p.m., you go out in the Central Park and you can get mugged and tugged and whatever you not in such a nice condition. <laughs> what to speak at night or some other time, you know, whatever. So people, people then start acting and living like this. It's hellish. Anyway. So they did some statistics. That's very interesting, just as a contrast, which they repeated some 50 years ago. You know? So in some 50s and year 2000, even now it's more advanced. The statistics, what are the biggest problems that uh, professors or teachers face in the in the classrooms. So that was very interesting. So what was way back in some 70 years back, you see? It's 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 it sounds like a joke, you know, when you hear about issues that are going on nowadays in class. I don't know what's happening here in that matter. I mean of course I do know to some extent we did so many guitar competitions, we go to schools and you know it's and still not as bad like in the West, but it's pretty bad. 
But I'll just ask you one thing. What, what's the difference? Just don't tell me black and white. What's the difference between these two images? Can anyone raise their hand? Just, 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 by, just by seeing, looking at these two, two images. Just, just please. Can you notice certain differences? Can you point to certain differences? Because obviously they are not the same. Ah, yes. They are disciplined. They are disciplined. Okay, yeah, they are a little bit disciplined. Okay, what else? Huh? Any other? Dress. Dress. Okay, they have some dress codes and then they don't really uh, casual. Okay. Anybody else? Did I, did I call for this? Okay. They are sitting properly. He said that already. Yes. They're only boys. They're only boys. <laughs> 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 okay. Yeah. 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 <laughs> okay, anything else? I think that's one of the major ones. But you see, these guys are also happy, they're smiling. They're very satisfied. You may think, you know, just because of posture and this and that, but no, they're also very happy and satisfied. There's some discipline. There's some discipline there. I know so many cases, people have. How many of you are studying? <laughs> How many of you are studying? The rest of you are working? Or some, some of you are still studying. Do you have any girls in your what is it, college or school or something? Is it easy to study when you have girls you know, in your classroom? <laughs> it's very distracting. It's very difficult, actually. It's very difficult. It's very difficult. My brother flunked once. My mother was very upset. Anyway, but for such kind of reason. <laughs> very distracting to, to be with the girls. So if you want to study, then you can't be doing both things. It's very difficult. <clears throat> okay. So yeah, talking about the problems. You know what were the problems with the statistics earlier? You know, it was a big thing, you could throw paper or airplane, you know, through the classroom or something. They would go to the principal, you know, why are you disturbing? Why are you it was a big thing, you know, if the teacher comes in and you don't raise, you don't stand up to greet him. You know, so there was a requirement of some dis disciplinary, disciplinary action. <laughs> Then if you're putting chewing gum, you know, beneath the chair or <laughs> even worse, you put it on top of someone else or something. Or 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 you know, stuff like this. You know, these are considered problems, serious problems. For you know, for us today, and this sounds like a joke, you know, but then what were the problems, you know, and what are the problems if you hear uh, <clears throat> What's going on in Brooklyn school system or something or somewhere in the way and they have a you have a drug abuse, you have a rape cases, you have a gang wars, you have uh, uh, you know shootings going on, you have so many, so many horrible you know, you can't enter the school unless you pass the metal detector. You know, the way of course here in India I've been to many schools, teachers and the professors that I mean the uh, Principle, there's so much complaint. What is the behavior of the children? It's horrible. They're so disrespectful. Horrible, horrible things going on. Of course, you know yourself. You don't have to mention this. What else goes on? Um. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, what I wanted to say just before that happened, they're just kind of closing. Of course, we ourselves were are part of that, no? <laughs> That's what I'm saying. You all know what's going on. You all know what's going on. <laughs> yeah. So that, this is what is so evident, and it's just so many things steadily increasing. So many negative things, you know, violence. You know how much violence you can see throughout the world. So many you know, protests going on. 
unemployment, murder cases, public unrest, you know, corruption, mental stress, rape cases, divorces, drug addictions, wars, and China is gearing up for Taiwan. Of course, it's going on. If it's going on, then when it's going to happen, India is here also. Don't, don't be so casual thinking that everything is nice and fine. But for how long? Study the history. Nothing has been ever fine for a long period of time. The heavy purifications that evolved. So it's, but it's increasing, that's the point. Terrorism, no. So are we really advancing in the right direction? We pointed out, you know, we are technologically becoming very sophisticated. So is that really an advancement? <coughs> That's really, are we really advancing in the wrong direction? Yeah. What does that mean? Yeah. You get some big blast that you. There's a story, I'll tell you one story. Prabhupada tells this very interesting story. There was a. Hey, do we have drama today? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Which one? Yeah, who? Why is it? Where is it? Oh, what's the drama? It's not happiness, finding real happiness. Okay, can you make about uh, Yogi and the mouse? Also, can you add a little bit that one? We didn't have that for a long, long, long time. Ah, speak to them. So there, okay, you'll see the drama also. See about happiness and then Yogi and the mouse. And then remember this slide, if you remember it. It's a nuclear blast. So remember that slide. Anybody's going to give a conclusion? Huh? From that drama? Okay, I'll, I'll tell the conclusion. Somebody can remind me and then somebody can, after the drama, somebody can point out. Okay. So you, you'll have that explained in a little more visual manner, more than this. Okay, so what makes a human being superior to animal? That's a very nice verse here in Mahabharat. Uh, Okay, the activities of eating, sleeping, mating, and defending are common in animals and human beings. So that we already discussed. That's common. That's a common creature. But the human beings are considered superior only when they inquire about God and perform the Dharma. Obeying his laws, loving, serving, otherwise they're considered. Otherwise they're considered just like animals. So that's the that's the difference. Dharma. That's the only difference. We said superior intelligence. We said there's so many things. They said it's dharma. It's only dharma. That means higher consciousness of spiritual practice. It's only dharma. Animal. No dog will come here. You know. No bird will come here. No elephant will come here. You know. For such kind of presentation. Spiritual discourses. They'll just look, if they come, they'll look, they'll sniff around, maybe some mouse is around, or some whatever. Bug at this and that. They look very food, very shelter, very sex life. That's all that they're concerned about. You see any animal planet, geographic, this, that, whatever. What are animals doing? 24 hours a day, very food, very shelter, very sex, very you know, this and that. That's all. They won't ask you know, anything higher than that. So that's the difference between humans and the animals. So they can inquire and can't, can inquire about eating, sleeping, mating, fear, but humans can inquire like that and beyond. Big difference. Otherwise, if you don't do that, then what's, what's the difference? So human beings have higher intelligence to find out the cause of suffering, to inquire about the purpose of life, to harmonize our life with God and nature, to attain eternal happiness. Okay, I'll speed up a little bit here. But we have some things to cover. It has been a little fire. So, so, so inquiry, that's promoting to higher life. And no inquiry, that means the modes. You see, the human life, it's like a crossroad. That's a very interesting analogy to understand. It's like you come to a crossroad. You can go this way or that way. You can go up, you can go down. There are different options. So human being can develop the reasonable power to ask the following questions. Why am I suffering? That's what he said. You know, in the beginning, we want to be happy, but where is the happiness? Where is the happiness? Then why am I suffering? I'm making so much endeavor to prevent, you know, suffering to be inflicted upon me, but I'm still suffering. So then, what is the goal of life? What am I supposed to do? 
to be to experience that happiness. So there are different problems in life. You already mentioned there are problems. You know, in the beginning, we said there are so many variety of problems. But a problem can, can be considered a real problem if it fulfills the following three criteria. That's the, that's the real problem. There are so many, but let's stick to the most essential one. So it's common to all. Nobody wants it, you know, and nobody can avoid it. <laughs> That's a real problem. These are real problems of life. That's something that really one has to focus on. So what is it? It's common to all. It means every nobody can avoid it. You know, so nobody wants it either. Sometimes, you know, somebody wants somebody else to suffer so they can benefit from that. Yeah. Or some things are just men, you know, sometimes you do have a problem, but then you know somebody earns on that to fix it up, fix it up or something, whatever. And nobody can avoid it. You can't avoid it. In this human body, you can't avoid it. So, so what are the four real problems of life that fulfill the above three criteria? What, what is it? Uh, anybody can guess? What's the worst problem in life? Yes. What? Birth. Okay. Yes. Birth and disease. Already. So you already know. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so what is this? <laughs> this is funny. See how body is changing. <laughs> <laughs> so we want to remain young forever. Anybody knows him? Yep. It's quite, you know, outdated, but still. It is still directing a movie. I think yeah, there's some directing something. Yeah. But, anyway. but we no longer look beautiful. See, that's the state of body. Nobody wants to get old. Cosmetic industry is flourishing due to fear of old age. When you enter, what is that, PVR or something? PVR? Yeah, yes. And it's a big uh, mall also. When you enter, what's the first thing you enter? What's the first thing? What's the first display? What's the first thing that you can buy? Cosmetics. 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 That's the thing. That's the first thing everybody looks for. How to stop aging, how to look nice, how to pretend to be very beautiful. Whatever it is, that's, that's what we said. That's, that's a problem with our body. So many problems with our body. So we try to make up. That's what they say make up. <laughs> make up for so many things that are missing. <laughs> you need a fortune for it. Anyway. So people are trying to stop aging. Anyway. And they capture sweet memories so they can at least see and be satisfied in old age. I see, this is me, I was there remembering. They used to have albums, you know, with photographs. Nowadays you have mobile. Oh, you can't store these photos, these two photos. It gets lost, no? Anybody story? Somebody's. <laughs> Poor people had albums, you know. So our body grows from childhood to boyhood, to youth, to old age, eventually bringing about that living on the Bones in that is in this in this in mm. So we want to remain healthy. But much against our wish, we encounter various diseases. That's really heavy, and you know? once you're sick and you really feel <laughs> the miseries. And you can't avoid it. So birth, old age, disease, and death. Mm. One who can perceive these as real problems of life, pleasing knowledge. So that's 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 what is defined by Bhagavad Gita. Janam Dikshu Jayadi Kadoshan Darshan. These are real problems. Of course, many we said earlier, but these are real. So also if you analyze our lives, you're constantly tormented with the Atmika Klesha, miseries due to body and mind. You know? We said, of course, disease, that's on gross level, old age, but there are so many mental tortures that one can undergo, can be really hellish. And then, uh, Adipautika, miseries due to other living beings. So many trouble other people are giving us, other creatures, and so many things. You can't avoid it. Always face someone who is, who is trying to exploit you or demean you or trouble you in some way or some, something happens. 
And then and it died become misery is due to natural disasters. And now in US, we said US such a nice condition that every now and then they have some tornadoes, hurricanes, so many things going on, so many heat waves, cold waves, earthquakes, this, that, something happens. It's always some kind of trouble. Of course, it's all around the world. India has its had its own taste for it and unfortunately so many things happen. And I already know about it. So, although we are advanced, advanced in medical science, you know, and we have the latest technology at our disposal, a little faster, okay? Still, our plans for good health and happiness are ported with newer and newer diseases. I recently had an ear infection, and I was traveling this and that. And, uh, and then we had this Nazi Kyatra, right? And then I just, it was so painful, you know, we just came back, it was very painful in the train, we were coming back, and then I said, yeah, I really, I better go to some hospital or something. And then we came to this Nanavati hospital, and then we asked how much it will cost. And they started making bills, I said, forget it, you know, it's like too much. <laughs> you get any disease, you get such a bill, you know, then you then you you'll get another disease. Just seeing that. <laughs> 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 so we said, so forget it. You know, it's just too much. It's amazing. You know. So you think the, you know the hospital will solve your problem? Give you more problems. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's life. You know. <clears throat> so, okay. He had a very troublesome. He suffered from Parkinson's disease, he couldn't even lift a cup of coffee after it. That's the you know, when somebody kicks you in the head so many times, what do you think will happen? You may be a champion for how long? Yeah. And then later you suffer so much in your life. It's pretty heavy. For a little fame. And then how much money you have to you know that that's the thing in life people are not uh, realizing. That's another thing that it's showing the lack of consciousness. You enjoy life so much when you're young. So how much you have to pay for that health that you ruined in your youth? That's, that's something we don't think. You know, we do so many things. We want adventure, we do so many things. How much we ruin our health? We ruin our body, you know, by illicit activities, by, by breaking the body, by so many extreme sports, these, that, so many things we do. And then how much you have to suffer? What's the pay? What's the price for it? That's again something we never think about it because we're so wild, you know. But what can be done? So why do even such great personality suffer from problems? You know? There's so many. Everybody suffering, of course. So can scientific advancement helps help us put a full stop to all suffering? Yeah, we say yes, you get another set of new pills that will solve all the issues you just take this just take that <laughs> yeah one scientist said no man can fly like a bird in the sky and swim like a fish underwater in a submarine ah, now man can sorry now man can fly like a bird in the sky and swim like a fish in the water in the submarine well it's difficult to get some drones around that but anyway let's say there's no war <clears throat> But the only problem is he can't walk on land like a human being because of pollution. India, the worst, one of the worst in the world. We are fortunate here to get some fresh breeze from the ocean. How much people suffer from allergies, asthma, so many different things. <coughs> Delhi, Kolkata, Mumbai, and some other cities that are hellishly polluted. How many cancer cases, how many this and that. Why we don't talk about this? For what? And we are, we are, I was in, sometimes go to Chhattisgarh. It's a, they, they proud themselves of exploiting, raping the earth, you know, from so much coal, this and that, so many resources. But you see the land, you see the soil, you see everything, you see the air, you know, how, what, what is it? Well, you see, everything is full of dust particles and pollutants, all, all kinds of types. What's the quality of life in that sense? You can't breathe the fresh air anymore. It's hellish. Anyway. So a mountain of six million tires. <laughs> yeah. 
In Germany alone, there are more than 2,000 illegal dumping sites. Nuclear waste remains toxic for thousands of years. We have no idea how, where the nuclear waste is, 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 is buried. We have no idea how much is dumped into the oceans. We have no, even in, in India, of course, there are no rules and regulations. The, the Germany, people are so conscious about so many things. And this is information from one devotee who, who is a scientist who works in the nuclear field, in our nuclear power plants and so forth. That, that they found out, somehow they found that there, two, that there were some years back, 2,000 illegal dumping sites. That's in a country which is highly you know, disciplined, regulated, and controlled. Can you imagine what happens in India or so many other countries? We have no idea what's going on. We're living on a radioactive waste, you know. We have no idea how it affects us. Science has invented bombs that can only blast living bodies into pieces. Can they create life? So what is the scientific solution for any problem? When you're old, use the hair. <laughs> Okay, your wrinkles, use the facelift, back pain, use painkillers. Yeah, they give me some painkillers, but I didn't use them. Use them. <laughs> Oxygen tubes. Uh, so what do you do about these problems? So we can patch up the problems to fool people for some time. Um, that's a knight on the white horse. And the princess there. And you see but the reality will be soon exposed. <laughs> you know, externally. That's why you say cosmetics, no? Makeup and stuff. How, <laughs> that's, that's really a good one. You know, when you, you don't even know nowadays, you, you meet some girl or something, you don't know what's real, what's not real. <laughs> you know, how many things are, how many people go for so? I think just recently there was, what was it, Tom Cruise and uh, something, you know, he had so many plastic surgeries, people, you know. How many plastic surgeries people perform? How much suffering they have to undergo? Whew. Hellish, hellish. This bodily consciousness, you know, that makes you so, so frustrated, so depressed. So science technology cannot stop bondage, cannot eradicate disease from the earth. Hardly has any understanding about life and death. Okay. So luxuries and comforts offered by science and technology cannot satisfy the soul. That's another important point. A little more, just a little more attention, we're almost over. Okay, so in spite of having everything, you can live in the Western world, you can live under any luxurious conditions. You think people are happy and satisfied? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. They still have to deal with all the different miseries that we pointed out earlier. Adiatic, adibaltic, adidaic. No matter what kind of environment you live in. And still you will be, even if you have everything, let's say, absolutely perfect, which is impossible just immediately to rule that out, you, you, can, you will still not be happy and satisfied. Because you're not a body. No matter how you try to make body comfortable, you will still be dissatisfied. People still have depressions, frustrations. They still have so many issues and difficulties, you know, people being envious of them. So many problems to deal with, you know. So this is compared like a fish taken out of the water that cannot be satisfied by any kind of facilities for enjoyment. Like you go here, to a beach, you know, and uh, once there was a whale. Anybody remember this was a big whale? Mm -hmm. It was washed out some years back. <laughs> but just any fish, of course, there's so many fishermen, they go in and every time they bring some fish you know, from the. Uh, so I take any fish and tell her, you will live here in Juhu. Everybody wants to live here in Juhu. A very prestigious area, and, and you'll be given the best girl as an attendant, and you'll be given the latest movies to see, and you'll be given the best cigarettes, and whatever, this and that. Will that fish be happy? <laughs> Impossible. So that's our position here in this material. No matter what facilities you gain, or you're offered, you cannot be happy. Because soul, spirit, or and matter 
don't mix. You can't mix you know, oil and water. You can try to stir it as much as you want and never mix it up. Oil will always serve so. So that's our position. <clears throat> okay. So therefore, those who are wise, you know, and they try to at least inquire about you know, some higher purpose of life, follow some laws, you know, some principles. And those who, you know, don't, well, they're just blinded practically. They try to exploit this planet. And uh, they're quite selfish for their own gratification. So it's quite a difference. Of course, there, there are mixtures also. There are sometimes in between. So we have various kinds of experiences. Yeah. But essentially, those who are just very selfish, that they're also very envious of others. That's very interesting. Very envious, very insecure, very violent. Yeah. So we just experience hell practically even in this life. It's all a matter of your mentality, a matter of your disposition. So therefore, those who are foolish, they don't understand how the time is passing. I keep in my eye on the clock. But those who are foolish, they don't understand how time is passing. <laughs> you see, life is going very, very fast. You don't utilize your human form of life for some higher inquiries, like we said, inquiries about life and death. Then we're just like animals. They're just like animals. They're just busy uh, for short-lived pleasures of life. Yeah. Gambling, partying, and exploiting others, enjoying all kinds of so-called eatable things. And then we are no better like this Bakri there, you know, I say. They're given some grass and they don't understand what awaits them. Yeah. So much grass. They're so busy. One second, let me see. <laughs> next, 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 next. <laughs> that, that's our position. That's our position. Any moment we can, anybody, can anyone guarantee that you're going to leave for the next five minutes? Where is the guarantee? And what's the, what are we using our lives for? Just to eat some grass and then be happy with that even if you get it? No. So that's the mentality of the goat. So we want to lord this over this material nature, exploit this world. As I said, that's why. What, what are the old, what are the old wars happening for? It's just they're fighting over resources, resources. That's all. Who's gonna be proprietor and control so that one can enjoy? But what kind of enjoyment is when the war happens? How much suffering that is? How many people have to lose lives for what? What a crazy civilization. So we suffer the threefold miseries and four real problems of life due to acting simply against the God's laws. Just like a mysterious child who leaves the safe custody of the parents. So what is the goal of life? I talked about sufferings. Yeah, but then what is the goal of life? So the four sampradayas in which the Vedic wisdom has been carefully handed over through a chain of acharyas of the spiritual teachers till date. So this is how we're going to find out what is the goal of life. <coughs> the different sampradayas you know, that are passing down these teachings, which are giving us, as we know, the Vedas are the manual of life. The world is created, you get a manual. You get any gadget or something, you get a manual, how to use it. So we follow the manual, the best, and the more you follow, the more you benefit. So therefore, Srimad Bhagavatam points out, after many, many births and deaths, one achieves the rare human form of life, which all the temporary affords one the opportunity to attain the highest perfection. After all, the sense gratification is available even in the most abominable species of life, where Krishna consciousness is possible only for human beings. Hare Krishna. So, human life is meant, like I said, is meant for dharma. It's meant to understand what is it. It's meant to understand how to act properly, what's really the goal of life. You know, then if one tries to do it, that's the whole point. One can make you know, one's own experiment. One can testify for oneself. It's not that difficult. 
And then you can feel some happiness and pleasure, really. Everything else, so called, so called happiness and pleasure we feel in this life, it always ends in frustration. It's not only lasting. That's a bigger difference. Okay, thank you, Hare Krishna. Any questions? Of course, we can discuss afterwards during the dinner. After now, we'll have a drama. Ready? Yeah? Okay, yeah. <laughs> we'll have a drama.